everybody, welcome to the Japanaholic Podcast. Podcast surrounded by topics all about Japan, anime, and games. Discussed by one certified Japanaholic. I am your host, Taylor Fry. T- today, we got the first installation, Anime Showdowns, where I put two anime series in a best of five head-to-head competition to see which one I would rather watch. And in today's first installment of Anime Showdowns, since June was Pride Month, I picked two Yuri animes to p- compare and contrast. Bloomin' You versus Citrus. And in the best of five, the five categories for today would be characters, stories, how they develop in developments, animation, and rewatchability or overall enjoyment. However you want to say the last uh, category is up to you. I don't really care. <laughs> um... The reason why I picked these two outside of the the, the, the whole Pride Month thing is because I just recently watched Blooming You again. Again. Because I just bought the Blu-ray. You know, obviously, I'm going to re-watch the hell out of Blooming You if I just got the Blu-ray. And it got me thinking about the other Yuri anime that I've also seen lately, or recently. Not Sakura Quest. I'll get to that soon. <laughs> or not Sakura, is it Sakura Quest? Sakura Trick, excuse me, not Sakura Quest. Sakura Trick. Um, I watched Citrus when I was first getting into anime, and that was a trip all in of itself. I'll probably do another podcast episode on later down the line. But, but, I'm putting these two in a head-to-head best-of-five situation to see which one I would rather watch. Now, keep in mind, this will all be in my opinion, so I'm obviously going to try and speak a little bit on the professional side, give off what I think of each of the characters on the professional side, but I'm not also, I'm not going to not give off my personal opinions on the characters or the story or whatever. This is anime showdowns, obviously. So, for the most part, this will just be my opinions on what exactly I think of all the characters and what I think of all of the, like, the stories or the animation, you know, best of five. So, before we get into round number one, which will be characters, Tale of the Tape for the two shows, shall we? I put Tale of the Tape, I put four little columns into the Tale of the Tape that I'm going to be going over just to give everybody a brief background as to, you know, what to expect when first getting into this show, okay? Because if anybody has not seen these shows uh, before watching this, you will you will get spoiled quite a bit, but... I will not spoil anything outside the anime adaptation because that's anime showdowns. I'm only going to be talking about the adaptation of the she- of the series. I'm not going to be talking about its manga counterparts or the light novel count- counterparts um, in anime showdowns. I'll probably do like light novel showdowns or manga showdowns in the future. But today it's just going to be anime showdowns. So let's get to tale of the tape, shall we? And I'll go through I'll go through each of the like the categories and stuff like that. Um, like chronic like downwards so like bloom into you and i'll talk about its studio its mangaka its director and how many episodes it ran and then i'll do the same thing over to citrus so it's so if if that helps any so for bloom into you it was made by troika studios who is also known for making making idolish seven recreators and ald noah zero its director was makoto kaito and its mangaka was niao nakatani and it ran for 13 episodes. So Bloom into You does have a slight advantage heading into today's little battle because it ran for one more episode than Citrus. It's just one episode, but still an advantage nonetheless. For Citrus, it was made by Passione Studios, which is also known for making High School DxD Hero, Hinako Notes, and the ever so popular Interspecies Reviewers. Director is Taiko Takahashi, who also directed Hiroko Notes and Yusuga no Sora. So that was a, a really surprising fact that I found about him. Because I love that show. And the mangaka is Sabu Orota. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get into round number one of the first installation of Anime Showdowns. The Characters. <laughs> I'll go ahead and start us off here with Blooming to Use characters and just talk about what I thought of the characters themselves. Um, starting off with the main two main ma- female protagonists of Yui Koto and Toko Nanami. Um, I really found that, like, just looking at their appearance and looking at the backgrounds of these characters, like 
taking literally like for the first two rounds, I'm only going to be talking about like what I could find in the first episode. So only the first episode will really be mentioned in the first two rounds. And then once developments hits, that's when I'll talk about more of the anime adaptation. But that's just an FYI. Um, after watching the first episode of Bloom into You, I found the um, the chemistry behind uh, Toko and uh, Kyoto San um, to be really fucking amazing. Absolutely flat out amazing. Okay. Um, and it could be because if you look at the personalities between you and Toko, where it comes to you doesn't know how to feel any sort of like love or anything like that, even though she's dreamed about it for so long. And then, you know, you have to spend the entire anime adaptation hoping that she knows what it feels like, um, you know, versus someone who knows what it's like to feel love in some ways and doesn't hide it which is Toko, I really enjoy that kind of chemistry in a way. Where in, in an anime like Citrus, which I'll get into more in depth like here in just a few moments, but I really, like, if you look at, uh, if you look at Yuzu and Mei from Citrus, they are basically essentially identical in terms of, like, personality. Um... For the most part, for the most part, I'll talk about why I think of that in the most part here in a few moments, but they're almost identical to the two in Bloom and You with uh, you and Toko. It's the one thing I do not like about Japanese names is trying to say the Japanese name you because it makes me sound like I'm saying like the English word you. So that's why I keep like stopping myself because I either want to call her Kyoto or you. But I cannot. It's like Kyoto is Kyoto. Kyoto. See, I can't even speak. <laughs> and I'm wearing a Kyoto animation shirt, so that's why I keep wanting to say Kyoto. But it's Kyoto. It's it's hard to say. So that's why I want to say you. But then it re quickly reminds me of the English word you. So that's why I have issues speaking it. I'm not good with speaking Japanese, if you can tell. But anyways, you know, just in the first like few, the first few minutes of the first episode of Bloom into You. You'll find out that you just doesn't know how to feel, like, feel love. And, you know, even though she dreams about it so much, but once the confession hit, well, confession scene hits with uh, Toko, it, she just doesn't know how to feel about it. And just in the first episode, I found, it's also because of the animation, I'll talk more about that in a minute, but just in, like, just everything felt so calming, realistic, and peaceful with the two characters, like with Toko and you discussing, you know, talking and stuff like that just before the confession scene even. So, um, but now if I move over to like supporting characters of Bloom and you, um, for example, uh, Kuya Kuyomi, I think that's how you say it. Yeah. Um, who is voiced by the, I, <laughs> What what would you call her the the comedy seiyuu the comediest seiyuu ever? Uh, Konomi Kohara, who voices a bunch of like airheads, um, like Shamiko from the Demon Girl Next Door and Shika from Love Is War. Um, she voices her. She voices her, which I part of me is super surprised when she has like her actual serious side on her because it's like it's so indistinguishable. And it's like it's so different compared to like literally the any other uh, characters that she plays. But I really like if we're talking about um, Koyomi and her personality and how she, you know, and this is like outside the first episode now. But like if I'm talking about characters, I have to really go outside the first episode for this one. But the way that she, you know, is tasked to um write the, the school play or whatever her like reactions and her personality just feels so ultra realistic in a way um and you're gonna hear me saying that a lot when comparing bloom into you to citrus is bloom into you is more realistic in some ways than citrus was than citrus is um, I'll talk more about that in the story and development. 
Um, but for the characters in uh, Bloom Into You, like mainly the, the two main female protagonists, absolutely love both of their personalities and I love their appearances, of course. So there's that for Bloom Into You. Now, for Citrus, this one here, comparing the two female protagonists here, honestly, if I have to look at each of their personalities, each one of them makes me want to bash my head against the wall several times in a row. <laughs> because you have Yuzu, who, like, this is just in the first episode just comes off as this really big ego egotistical bastard <laughs> and I I don't like her and the one turn off for me when it comes to anime characters is when it's a character that I'm supposed to like or I'm supposed to you know tolerate but I don't like me personally I don't associate the character to be either tolerable or likable in the first episode, it's difficult for me to keep watching. But then you combine that with another main character that is exactly like Yuzu, but the complete opposite of Yuzu in terms of personality, and I'm talking about Mei, that makes me want to drop the series, but I never did drop the series. I watched all 12 episodes. But I like when I compared when I said that, you know, Yu and Toko were, you know, basically identical to Yuzu and Mei, you know, I really compared about like how their personalities are completely different. But in a way, they're all, they also become one with each other, not in a spicy way, of course. Well, outside of that, of course. Eh. But. When watching Citrus, I just could not, I could not get myself to like Yuzu or Mei, even in the first episode. Okay, in the first few, like, minutes, even before the opening hit of the first episode of Citrus, I immediately wanted to stop watching in some ways because of the fact that Yuzu was just so annoying. Like, the... She's just annoying, and I don't know if we're supposed to think that she's annoying or what, but I just completely, I completely got turned off watching uh, Citrus in the first, like, few minutes. But, of course, no, you know, with me in anime, if I start a series, I usually end up finishing it, no matter how trash the series is. You really have to get me to hate the series in order for me to drop it. And as much as I hate Citrus, I didn't drop it. But, I really, it, this is just in the main, like, the main cast. I'm not talking about the supporting characters, which most of them annoy me, okay? So, it doesn't help. Uh, who, what, what was her name? What was her name? Hold on. Da, 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 oh, uh, Matsuri Matsuri Mizusawa, I think that's how you say your name, who is in middle school. Um, oh boy. I'll talk more about her in the story. and Well, actually, I'll talk more about development, her about in development, so I can speak English. But, mm, I didn't like her a lot. Okay? I really... I really... The only character I really didn't hate was Harumi but still there was some levels of hate in in her in in my opinion so I think you could get what I'm trying to say here and who's gonna get the first point in this already uh blooming you will get the point here for characters one to zero blooming to you because, or 1 0 if we're talking soccer, because, you know, or football, because I watch a lot of soccer or football, however you want to call it. So I'll, I'll probably say nil whenever there's a zero. But, oh my God, talking about the characters and the personalities, it's, 
it's a big like 180 comparing Blooming to You to Citrus. Okay, even though I said earlier that uh, Blooming to You with You and Toko are, you know, com- almost completely identical to Yuzu and Mei, um, that is because I'm mainly talking about how if you compare the two characters of You and Koto, how they seem different like completely different in terms of you doesn't know how to express love or doesn't know how to feel it whereas toko absolutely knows what it's like to feel love actually she kind of doesn't because she's never been in love before but she's willing to you know show it show what she thinks love is in like every way of the everywhere way of the word and then you look at citrus and yuzu is basically like toko may is just basically like you so there you go so now let's move on to round number two of anime showdowns for this one which story i'm gonna go ahead and start us off here with citrus in story because i feel like i have more to say about citrus in terms of story that i do with blooming to you um mostly in a bad way <laughs> um so citrus if we're talking about the first episode i mean obviously first episode is more eventful in citrus than blooming you in many ways so after meeting yuzu she ends up transferring over to a brand new school which is an all-girls high school so her dream of finding a high school boyfriend just went down the tube just like that well she being the egotistical little something that would get me demonetized on YouTube that she is. I think I've already said it once. My bad. But being the little egotistical girl she is, she breaks all the rules. First day, she gets in trouble. Oh, everything looks so bleak. And we're supposed to feel bad, but I don't feel bad for her. She deserves every bit of it. Um... Runs into a pretty spicy scene with May and a teacher. And, uh... Um... It turns out that Yuzu moved because her mother was getting remarried. And turns out that May is now her stepsister. And the whole domestic girlfriend style story goes on from there. But not before we end episode one with a pretty forceful little uh, spicy scene that if you could already tell by my voice and my expression on the video, uh, (laughs) how did I watch this for 12 episodes and not drop it? I will say though, I will say though, I got interested in some way. And I'm not happy about, I'm not happy that I said I was interested in the series for the, for some parts of the series. It all quickly went away after the first episode. I'll talk more about that next round. But, oh my god. <laughs> this story, like, okay. This, if you already know by now, if you've listened to the podcast for at least a few months, you'll know that my first, like, anime that I've ever really completed was Domestic Girlfriend, which I've said in its weeb reviews. I think I said I think I said it in the weeb reviews that my second anime that I've ever watched was Citrus. How do I still like anime to this day? <laughs> oh lord, am I just attracted to trash? I don't know. But yeah, Citrus was my second um, anime that I've ever really watched and completed all the way through. Um, I think it's just because of the fact that when I was, you know, looking up animes to watch, I found that Citrus is like, part, like first episode plot or whatever was a, it was almost the exact same as um, Domestic Girlfriend. Okay. So I thought that I was going to like Citrus just as much as I liked Domestic Girlfriend because of the fact that the story just 
look the same. Because if you compare Citrus and Domestic Girlfriend in terms of the first episode, they're almost identical. Because you have somebody who's getting remarried and turns out they've had a few altercations with the, you know, the people that become their stepsisters. So, best way I can put it without really spoiling anything about Domestic Girlfriend. But everybody knows what Domestic Girlfriend's about, so... Not really much to say with that series, but continuing on with Citrus, I don't know. That's just a big, it's just a big no for me in terms of how they executed it. Okay, because unlike Domestic Girlfriend, there's a lot more. I hate to use this word because this will get me demonetized, but sexual assault and. Maybe you could call it rape in some cases because it's very, uh, very forced and in a way very speechless. I make myself very speechless talking about this series out loud. So yeah, let's talk about Yagata Kimi Ninaru, shall we? Let's talk about Blooming to You because now I feel like I could breathe a little bit because after watching Blooming to You, especially in the first episode... It's like a breath. It's like a breath of fresh air, because watching Bloom and You's first episode, where you can get like the story and you can get what you know, what you're what you're on, what you're gonna go on for, you know, the the kind of ride that you're getting on. If I can also stop saying you know when I'm trying to speak, you know. Oh my god, I've noticed that too. Past couple epi- uh, past couple podcast episodes, I keep saying you know, whenever I'm speaking and trying to think of words to say in terms in term I should just possibly say uh or um like any normal person would but I end up saying you know and most people are like no I don't know Taylor I don't know let's go ahead and let me just talk about the first episode of blooming to you um we're taking on this little adventure on how you wants to feel love. She's always dreamed about getting confessed to by somebody. And then it happens. But she doesn't know how she feels. She doesn't know how she's supposed to feel. And the more you watch this episode, the more realistic, if we're talking about compared to Citrus, the more realistic it feels. Okay. Because we're going to be going on this little adventure in a way, termly speaking, an adventure where you have to find out if you is going to find herself or not in terms of like feeling the love and stuff like that. This is what I mean by trying to say the name you when I am a native English speaker and I always have to say you. (laughs) <laughs> in terms of like English speaking you so it's difficult trying to say the names I would call her Kyoto but it's hard to and I probably say her name wrong at least a hundred thousand times and I'll probably get bashed for it by any Japanese speaking listeners probably bashed me for saying it wrong but let me let me ref- let me quickly remind you guys I have been learning Japanese for about a year and a half, and I'm still N5 level. Possibly N6. I know N6 is not a thing, but if N6 was a thing, I'd still be struggling with that. <laughs> but anyways, uh, about the story. Even though I ha- I don't have much to say about Blooming to Use little story in terms of like the first episode, that doesn't mean I'm not going to give the point to Blooming to You for this one. Because it's obviously going to make it 2-0. Blooming to You will go into developments with a pretty nice lead okay and if it gets one more point it automatically wins no way citrus can come out of this so there's that but that does not mean that i'm going to say like citrus's story in the first episode is better than you got to give me ninaru's first episode because it's not even though i have less to say about it that doesn't mean that it's terrible i just feel that blue mini use first episode is better paced and better like situated comparing that one comparing that episode to Citrus's first episode, obviously. 
just watch like even if you watch Blooming News first episode, okay? Even if you're not that kind of person who likes like calm or like that kind of romance where there's no like crazy or creepy fetishes going on or there's no like crazy kissing scenes still you would probably enjoy the first episode of blooming to you i mean i did i don't have any crazy fetishes and i'm not gonna reveal any of them to oh well, i don't i don't calm down i don't it's not that i don't understand why people would watch citrus okay i will admit there are some good points and some good little moments in citrus in terms of like the story but like I said before, the the bad just outweighs the good in terms of the first episode, and that's what unfortunately happened in Citrus's case. And as much as I give Blooming to You credit for having a good first episode in terms of story, there are some pretty slow moments or some pretty iffy moments that kind of could be in a way a little bit toned like toned up or whatever. In terms of like a story writing or plot point, plot pointing or whatever, but I'm still gonna give the point to Blooming to you two nil. We're done talking about the first episode. Let's talk about developments. Round three, and I'll start with Blooming to you for round at number three. So, how does the characters develop through the series? How does the story develop through the series? Well, as the series progresses, you, you know, just ends up accepting Toko's love in one condition, on one condition, excuse me, that she will never love her, if that makes sense. It, it's difficult to say. If you will never love Toko, I believe this is just my assumption, but I believe it's just mainly because you wants to know what it's like to feel loved and then, you know, she's trying to feel inspired in some way by Toko. To feel the love or feel love, give love, that sort of stuff. Which, if you're a manga reader, you know how this ends up. But I'm not going to talk about the manga because I said this before. It's only going to be the anime. Anime adaptation only. It's all I'm going to be speaking about. Uh, in terms of story developments... I want to say, honestly, not much happens in terms of drama. Like, there is some, like, hints of a love triangle going on with another one of the supporting characters. Um, but it really doesn't happen in the anime, in the adaptation. I am not entirely going to say it was glossed over because there are some points where it's like oh my god there could be a third wheel coming up here soon there could be a third wheel coming up soon but it honestly it never really happened and I don't know if I'm going to say I enjoyed that or not I don't know if I would rather have had a third wheel drama like arc or whatever or if I prefer the way that it was now it just depends on how it would have been adapted if that was going to happen and the character, of course, I'm talking about, if you know the stories, my nose, um, Sayaka. See, the thing is, is with her and, um, who was, um, who was, uh, Akari, Akari, yeah. I, those two look way too similar to me, because they both have blonde hair, and even though one is a little bit taller than her, I think, I think Akari is a little bit taller than her, but, it, ugh, you put them side by side together, it's like, I can't tell which one they are. Who is who? Who is Akari? Who is Sayaka? Uh, I think I said her name wrong. Damn uh. I really enjoyed Blooming to Use, like, developments and stuff like that. And the, the characters. But there is one massive turnoff for me um, when it comes to the story development. That comes at episode 13, which is the final episode. When you spend five episodes, at least the last five episodes up to this point, one, like, discuss, I hate my microphone stand, sorry, discussing a school play or a school, uh, what was it called? A screenplay, that's what it's called, the screenplay. 
You discuss it. You you want to find a writer. They find a writer. Like I've said before. Um in characters. Um they f- they get the cast lined up the way that they want it to. They they literally have it all planned out for like the 13th episode to be the screenplay. But you end it with you and Toko going to an aquarium on a date. Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad way to end an anime adaptation. But it just makes it feel like the last five or six episodes of developing a uh, screenplay arc just seem worthless. Because it just... You had all this build up. All for it to not really culminate in anything. Um, And I don't know why that could happen. But that's literally my only thing. And it's not like the screenplay took up the entire like anime adaptation. Because this is why I also just say like it doesn't bother me as much as anything else should. It's because it was kind of like half and half between the screenplay and you and Toko's relationship. Which I'll also say is, if you watch the develop the developments of those two characters, how they just gradually increase, increasingly like love each other or show affection to one another, like that's the kind of romance anime tropes or whatever that I love, where both the anime characters that are in love, you know, build up their relationship and stuff like that. I'll talk more about this kind of thing in Citrus, this thing, in just a few moments. But I really enjoyed the, I really enjoyed, like, the dynamic duo of Toko and Yu. Okay, and then there's, like, there's one scene where they're calling each other by their first names that really cultivates why I think this way. Okay, if you watch that scene, you know why I love this anime series. It's because the, the... the personalities, even though they're so different in some ways of those two characters, just for one little moment, they feel intertwined. For one little moment, okay, you feel like they're going to be the most inseparable thing, inseparable thing in the entire universe, okay? And you, th- and it's like the cutest thing you'll ever see in your entire life, okay? And that little scene right there cultivates why I love Blooming to Use story and character developments and why I think overall the series is a real good series to watch now on to citrus on to citrus I'm gonna have to smoke something here before I end up talking about this cause this is not going to be an easy to swallow pill to do okay So, first episode's down of Citrus. And, oh my god. Oh, as much as I say, like, some parts of Citrus' first episode is good, it all goes downhill from here. (laughs) Or maybe uphill if you're really into some of the kinkiest stuff on Earth. I don't know. But, okay. Oh my god. So... Episode 2 happens, and it's just more of an episode of Yuzu going like, Wait, what the? What, what, why did she do that? What the hell? What is happening? This shouldn't happen. Why is it happening? How should I feel about this? <laughs> should I? Should I? How should I feel? I don't know how to feel. Mom, how do you think I should feel? Oh, you're useless. Okay, never mind. But <laughs> my biggest, like, my biggest thing that I hate about this series is... Literally all of the characters that we meet outside the first episode make me want to hit myself with a bat. (laughs) Hit myself with a baseball bat. Just swing it. Okay? Because, oh my god. Because when episode, I think it was episode 3 or episode 4, I can't remember. When that that episode happens, at that rate, that's when when everybody who (laughs) didn't like the first two episodes would just say, fuck it, drop it. Because I should have dropped it at that point, but I didn't. Because I think it was the... I think it was the chairman, if I remember correctly. It was May's granddad, I think it was. Grandpa. He didn't accept 
you know, the remarriage. Well, he did accept the remarriage, but he didn't accept Yuzu, like, at all. And, you know, he was like, oh, I don't want her in my family. She's not a part of this family. That sort of stuff. And, oh my god. And then you get into those kinds of scenes where the the sexual assault and the rape and the, the demonetized language that I don't want to speak. It makes me embarrassed when I say it. But when that sort of stuff happens, almost unrealistically in many ways. To basically put it short... A lot of the developments that happen between Yuzu and Mei feel unrealistic in some ways. In terms of personality, you know, Yuzu becomes less of an annoying bitch and more of a caring bitch, but still an egotistical bitch. And Mei is just the same old, like... Like, cold-hearted bitch. Not to make a Jet reference or whatever. If anybody's listened to that classic song. Love that song. But, May just is still a cold-hearted... Not really sadistic, but just a cold-hearted... Not even really egotistical in the same way that Yuzu is. It's just, you know, she has everything that she ever... That she needs and stuff like that. Like, she has a rich family and student council president. Uh, I'm trying so hard to not go crazy talking about this. Because let me be completely honest. When I made it to the last episode, I felt physically sick. I felt myself physically wanting to just give up. <laughs> just physically want myself to die. That's what, I was tra- that's what I'm trying to say. But uh, <laughs> just trying to talk about Citrus is difficult. But I haven't really scratched the surface of why I just don't feel like this series should be watched by many people. In terms of like stories and character developments. Because Yuzu ends up caring for Mei. And Mei ends up wanting to care for Yuzu. But unlike the the little character thing that I talked about with you and Toko. That one little moment where you feel like they'll be like... Not separated at all or whatever. And they keep rising their relationship level up. Citrus is almost not the complete opposite. But it's so much much more of a roller coaster. It's like how does this happen? Because it's either Yuzu wants Mei. But Mei doesn't want Yuzu. Or the roles reverse. And the roles reverse again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. They never. Ever. Ever. Ever feel the same way for each other at the same time to sum this up there's one point i think it was like near the christmas party or whatever where yuzu was all like i'm gonna care for you may i want to be with you forever and stuff like that and may's like i don't know how to react to this and then like maybe an episode a couple episodes before and a couple episodes after may's all like i want to be with you forever and I never want to, you know, see you not be a part of my family. He's just like, oh, I don't know how to react to this. It's like, motherfucking what? <laughs> how does this happen? And then, uh, <laughs> then, what uh, what episode was this? Was this either eight or nine? It was during the Christmas part, or it was winter. I can't remember what episode it was on. Uh, just give me a moment. Just let, give me a second. Give me a second to reel myself in. Let me reel myself in real quick. Try to be cool. It's just hard. <laughs> Has anybody seen that video? Or am I the only one that's seen that video? Anyway. I don't remember what episode this was on. I don't remember what episode. Someone please tell me in the comments if they have seen this anime. But the date. The, the date. I'll put a huge air quotes on this. It's just mainly like hangout, I guess. Between... Yuzu and Matsuri pissed me off to a huge level. It pissed me the fuck off. Super high. <laughs> God damn it. Fuck. Because this character, Matsuri, is the one like huge character 
that I point to in terms of why I don't like the show's characters and their developments and stuff like that. Because she is just a bitch. <laughs> She's a terrible motherfucker, okay? She is a terrible sadistic motherfucker, okay? <laughs> because not only does she seduce Yuzu in many ways, she, I think she ends up like taking a picture of like her altercation with Mei, okay? Where she also seduced her and tries to bribe Yuzu into dating her, if I remember correctly. And I haven't even talked about her twisted personality in terms of what she does outside of this episode. Outside of what I just said. Where I'm going to quickly reiterate this real quick. She is... And I'm not fucking kidding when I'm saying this. Because she said it in the fucking episode herself. Second year in middle school. Second year. Which means I think she's either 13 or 14 years old. I'm not entirely sure how the school system works in Japan. I know it's similar to here in terms of like grades. I think like you graduate by the time you're like 19 if I remember correctly. But she's just entering her teen years. Selling. Her body online to older men. If you want a reason why to not watch Citrus is because of like characters like her, where it's like that's not that should not be a thing. That should not ever be, be like that should not be a character's background ever. That's I'm speechless. <laughs> Who? I think you know who's getting the point here for this route because it won't. Yeah, overall, let me let me calm myself down a little bit. Overall, I just don't feel like the sit like the whole citrus development and stuff like that is fluid. It's not realistic, and it obviously isn't not paced very well because there's sometimes where the pacing is way too fast, and then the pacing. I think the whole pacing in general is just way too unrealistically fast to some extent. Especially with how quickly every character changes their mind. Or at least Yuzu and Mei. How quickly they change their fucking minds almost on the dime of their feelings. Because like I said before, if Yuzu likes Mei, Mei doesn't like Yuzu. Or doesn't want. It's just like, huh? <laughs> and then a couple episodes later, flip, reverse, roll reversed. Huh? It's like, can you get on the same level, please? 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 Blooming and you will not only win this round, but they have won the first anime showdown. But we still have two more rounds that I want to talk about. So, 3 nil, Blooming and you. Bloom and you is the winner, but we still have two more rounds to, to talk about, which I'll quickly briefly touch on because, of course, there's no point to really talk about these much in depth because... Bloom and you already won. The best Citrus could do is a 2-3 loss, but I don't know if even that will happen. All right. Next up, round four, animation. <laughs> this one here, I'll start off with Citrus with its animation. Now, I like Passione a lot. I love Hinako Note. I love Interspecies Reviewers. Outside of the whole sexy seats. But... I don't know what it is, but I really just found Citrus to be very sub par in terms of like animations. But what really takes the cake of why I don't like Citrus's animation? CGI crowds. Uh, there's CGI crowds, and there's some bit of CG in the um. Like in the wide shots, like when they're taking a look into like the city with full of people and stuff like that. Now, sometimes CG can be good in anime. I'll admit that. But, not in this situation. Okay? Not to mention the character designs just feel a little eh. But, that's more on the manga side than the anime side. Uh, in the animation department. So, I'm not going to give it 
I'm not going to really say like Passione did a horrible job with character designs because if they're sticking to like the manga designs, they obviously did a good job. That's just the manga design. That's just the manga character designs, not the anime character designs. So in terms of that, that's fine. But comparing that to Bloom and You is like night and day because Bloom and You is like, I don't watch a lot of Troika stuff. But man, let me fucking tell you, that was, whoo, animation. If I have to give a score for Bloom to You, animation's like a 9 out of 10. Citrus is like a 5 out of 10. So, unfortunately, Citrus will not win this one either. So it'll be a 4 nil lead for, uh, for Bloom to You, heading into its final category. Final category, rewatchability. <laughs> For rewatchability, um, I usually just say this one is more of like, if I enjoyed it enough that I would watch it again, or if I gave it to somebody, like, who didn't watch it the first time, who hasn't watched it a single time, and ask them if they would rather, you know, rewatch Boom and You or rewatch Citrus after they watched it a first time, of course. Um, this is kind of like that kind of spewel, Okay. So for this one, I'll start off with Bloom into You, and would I rewatch Bloom into You? Absolutely. I bought I bought the Blu-ray like deluxe thing. I obviously love the series in some way. Okay. Um, whereas with Citrus, would I rewatch it? It's not a hard no, but it is a no. I don't, I don't want to say, as much as I gave it, like, shit and stuff like that during the, the round three and basically all of today, um, as much shit as I give it, I do see, like, it being a reason why to watch it. I do see why people would watch it, like, a second or a third time, because the character developments and the stories make you go, oh, what the fuck? But a part of it's like, I, you know what? As much as I... Don't know what's happening? I'm going to watch it. Give me a, like a dumpster fire, okay? Because I'm basically comparing a dumpster fire <laughs> to, a, to a cheesecake. One's very good. One is... Uh, it could be attractive at some point, but not a lot of people are attracted to dumpster fires. I am, though. As, as you can clearly tell by the fact that I have one right next to me. But... And, and if you're not watching the video, it's because I still have my domestic non manga sitting on my desk right next to me. Um, I don't know why I have that up. I think that's just becoming a symbol of the videos now. But anyways, I wouldn't re-watch Citrus unless I really have to. Because, you know, unless I really love a series, I'm not going to re-watch it. Unless, like, there's nothing for me to do. Or if I want to see if I can like the series again. I'll possibly have to rewatch it soon. Um... Just to see if I can actually give off a better opinion. Later down the line, possibly do a wee reviews of it. I roll my eyes to that because I still have to do that sometime. But, you know, I think, I think that'll do it for this anime showdowns here. So, the winner of the first installation of anime showdowns with a dominant and flawless, might I add, Five to nil score. Yagate Kimini Naru wins the first showdown of Anime Showdown. I'll give off my final thoughts and opinions of this series before I actually turn it off. Turn off the podcast episode for this week here. Um, like I said uh, just a few minutes ago, as much as I give Citrus shit, it's not that I would, you know, not give any. Like I wouldn't give it a chance. Okay. It's just there's like comparing it to Bloom into You is night and day, of course. Um, there are many things that would turn people on in many ways than one of Citrus, and then turn people off in many ways than one um, with Citrus. And that's the same thing with Bloom into You. I mean, it depends on how you look at the. Uh, it depends on how you look at both series. If you like the character developments. All blooming to you, or if you would rather, if you rather like the like the kind of pacing that Citrus had, you know, it's just a very personal thing. Like I said before, it's all based on my personal opinions on, you know, what I think of the series. When I watched the first, uh, 
episode of Citrus compared to watching the first episode of Blooming to You. It, like I said before, it's just my personal opinion, of course. Um, but if by some chance you decide to watch Citrus now because of the fact of what I've said, you know, whether that be like something you would watch or whether that'd be something you would not watch, that's completely up to you if you have seen it already. Um, and both series do have an English dub, which, um, I mean, I really can't judge the English dub because obviously I really haven't seen much of the English dubs for both Blue to You and Citrus. I know Citrus does have a dub on Funimation, so does Blue to You, so I'll have to watch that sometime. And if that's not uploaded on my channel, one of those two, in terms of like has a dub because those videos are getting popular, you know, I'll probably do that sometime in the later, later months or whatever, but, uh, I think that'll do it for this week's episode of the Japanaholic podcast. Um, if you enjoy these kind of like anime showdowns or whatever, um, give it a like and subscribe on the YouTube channel and follow the podcast wherever you get your podcast, Stitcher, iTunes, Google podcast, tune in, iHeartRadio and Spotify. I think I said Spotify already, whatever, but, <laughs> um, but if you're also watching this on YouTube and you want to recommend me two anime series that I should compare and contrast, let me know in the comments below. Uh, my only my only like requirement is that they are not really so much night and day with comparing and contrasting whether or not I would like. Would rather it's like, oh, would you rather watch Dragon Ball Z or would you rather watch Tori Bochi? It's like don't do that. Because I obviously can't compare those two. It's not only is it a completely different genre, but Dragon Ball Z has like hundreds of episodes. Dory Bochelli has 12. So just give me like like very comparable uh, series to do. Okay. Um, for example, like whole, like two wholesome shows that you love to watch so much. Okay. Because I chances are I've probably seen them. I've, I've seen a bunch of wholesome shit in my life. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know when the next one will be out. I think I said this before that it'll either come out either monthly or bi-monthly or whenever I decide to do it again. So whenever I decide to do another episode of Anime Showdowns, you'll you'll be the first to know on my fuck on my Twitter page, um, over at the Japanaholic One. But yeah, that'll do it for this week's episode of the Japanaholic Podcast. Share this podcast out, grow it, grow the support or whatever, and I'll be back same time next week to do it all over again. But for now, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I've been Taylor, the Certified Japanaholic, signing off. Good night.